first year that the, that the female cone um, starts to grow, it's just growing. In the second year, the scales on the cone will open up a little bit, and that's when it's receptive to the pollen. So mm -hmm. the pollen will get in there in the second year. So now the cone's already a year old. Pollen comes in, the scales close back up, and it takes a year for those seeds to fully mature, and then the um, cone will open up in its third year it will open up for the seeds to disperse. The seeds are typically um, wind dispersed, they're winged, and so they'll sort of fall out of the cone and sort of um, helicopter down to the ground and spread out that way. So they don't spread very far usually. Uh, they also are often eaten by animals, squirrels, you'll see sort of, you know, tearing apart a, a seed cone. And um, they'll typically sort of eat some of the seeds and kind of maybe carry the cone off and drop the rest. So it's another way that the seeds can be dispersed. But for the most part, gymnosperms depend on the wind for both pollination and also for seed dispersal. And uh, because they're wind pollinated, and this is true for flowering plants, true. Flowering plants also. Um, anything that's wind pollinated is going to produce a lot more pollen than something that's animal pollinated. And the reason for that is that they're basically just sending it out on the wind and you know the chances of it getting to the right species in the right place at the right time are so slim that if you produce you know millions and millions literally billions of pollen grains then you're increasing your chances of successful pollination successful reproduction right so they produce a ton of pollen and uh, in the early spring a lot of the severe allergies pollen allergies that people have are to the wind pollinated plants like oak like pine, these things that are making tons and tons and tons of pollen so that the, the sort of pollen count in the air is really high for these wind pollinated species. 